The Love Center Vision Statement Crossing all the lines to reach all the people with the healing gospel of Jesus Christ. The Mission Statement We are a Christian church. Jesus Christ has issued to us a mandate for ministry to all people, especially the poor and lost. Our church seeks to identify and design a healing ministry to meet the needs of the total man, mind, body, and spirit, thereby making active disciples. The Intentional Strategy A commitment to the Word of God as the source of truth, a commitment to prayer, a commitment to praise and worship, a commitment to fellowship, a commitment to evangelism, based upon Acts 2, 42 through 47. Pastor Byron Broussard and the Love Center Academy wish to acknowledge and celebrate the members of the class of 2022. If you or a family member from K-5 through adult are graduating this year, please send us your picture, school information, and future plans to LC Events 1680 at gmail.com. Again, LC Events 1680 at gmail.com. Please submit your information by Wednesday, May 18th at 5 p.m. We look forward to sharing this experience with you and your family. Congratulations! as his summer pastime. Eating hot dogs, sipping a soda or a cold beer, and leisurely taking in a game, maybe even a double header, have long been staples of our cultural diet. Yet like so many chapters in American history, the game we know today followed a difficult road in including and accepting African American players. Modern baseball's roots predate the Civil War. And in its earliest years, black men played in the same games with white men. However, as separate but equal became the law of the land at the end of the century, an unwritten gentleman's agreement among white team owners transformed the color of the sport. In 1876, the National League was formed and professional baseball would eventually become white only. And so as a consequence, you began to see black communities of, of baseball players building alternative teams. The African Americans are forming these barnstorming squads, but even though you have these separate leagues, these events would often be organized by white sports promoters. The location of the games and the booking and the ticket sales were overwhelmingly controlled by white men. So even though these black players were the source of entertainment and enjoyment, 
black people got very little of the proceeds from the games themselves. Rube Foster was a giant among the early Negro baseball players and later manager of a team. Fed up with the unfair conditions of the American pastime, Foster imagined a way in which the Negro teams could fight back. On February 13, 1920, in a YMCA in Kansas City, Foster met with black team owners and proposed they organize their own National League. The historic day would mark the launch of the National Negro League, complete with eight teams, including the Detroit Stars, Kansas City Monarchs, and the St. Louis Giants. Later, other teams would emerge, like the Indianapolis Clowns and the Homestead Grays. There were extraordinary players in the National Negro League. Josh Gibson, Satchel Paige, Willie Mays. And really, these are people who are understood as some of the greatest baseball players in history. At the peak of its success, however, the National Negro League would witness the beginning of its decline, ironically, and an extremely talented and courageous team member of the Kansas City Monarchs, Jackie Robinson, broke Major League Baseball's color line in 1947. In hindsight, Robinson's historic draft by the Brooklyn Dodgers would be the siren song for Negro League Baseball. Now, 100 years later, it's crucial that we celebrate and honor those pioneers whose labors and talents made it possible for black players ultimately to break baseball's color line. The preaching of the gospel brings the heart and mind of God to the people who need to know and understand His will. God takes the yielded vessels and uses them to point us to the paths of hope and change for the better. In times like these, we need to hear a voice that will speak truth to power and love to the lost. Let's be blessed together now with Pastor Byron L. Broussard.